Okay, I'm here with Canute, and his mom is going to go uh, run a quick errand out the door, and he might get flustered a little bit when he sees her leave, but this is Canute's roadmap to success. All right, so um, we started off the session by going over marker words. Actually, we started off the session, there was a, um, a maintenance person here, and Canute was a little bit uncomfortable. And that's what we, uh, an example of something we call trigger stacking, which multiple things that are going on that kind of a human equivalent of a bad day. And since the, the worker was here and I showed up and he's not a big fan of strangers, I had his guardian put him on a harness. I tried to take him for a walk. Now he didn't like walking away from his home. So um, I had his guardian pick him up and he uh, handed him to me. He didn't protest. Um, and we walked about two blocks away from his house. We're in a nice quiet part of Santa Monica. And then I put him on the ground and then we walked back and he was interested in coming back. Now at first he didn't want to walk. So I did a gentle little rocking tug back and forth. You don't want to drag a dog. You don't want to pull him. That's forcing them to do things. I gently rocked a couple times. Then he got up and he recognized we're walking back towards the home, which he was basically his backstory. He was raised in a, uh, and whelped in a home with somebody who had never had puppies before. So he might've made some accidental mistakes um, uh, and then uh, didn't have a lot of socialization. So he knew pe the people in the house and in that house in the backyard. And that was it. Really, when you get a puppy, the period from three weeks to 16 weeks is called the critical socialization period. It's the most important developmental period any puppy goes through, any dog goes through. And you want to get them around a lot of pos uh, experiences in positive ways. Uh, things that we take for granted, like snapping out a plastic bag, sweeping the ground, turning the garbage disposal on, the ding of the microwave, um, uh, the vacuum cleaner. All these things we take for granted filter out for dogs. Like, what the hell is that? So cars on a street are really traumatic and, and overwhelming for him. So uh, the walks are a great way to get dogs to kind of feel a little bit more comfortable because they're in an outdoor environment, so there's a lot of distractions. Dogs are scent creatures, they should be sniffing. So uh, what, uh, now he did not sniff on the way back. And although this is a nice quiet part of Santa Monica, it is still busy. So one of the things I'd like the guardians to do is to take Canute out for uh, north of Montana to those really nice neighborhoods where there's giant front yards, there's not a lot of traffic, and then basically try to pick a time of the day where he's, it's not so busy. And maybe a 15 minute walk. I don't think he needs, he's a palm, he doesn't need an hour walk, but two 15 minute walks spread out throughout the, the day would be a great way for him to learn how to uh, start sniffing and be more of a dog. Now, what I like to do is I like using shredded Swiss cheese, get a bag of finely shredded Swiss cheese. So I'd like uh, the, uh, both of the guardians to take him north of Montana. And the female guardian can take him there to begin with. But basically what I do is I, and you can do this two ways where you can leave them in the car and do it. Or better way to do it would be go there together, uh, have the male get out with this uh, bag of sw uh, shredded Swiss cheese and walk in between each driveway, find a place on the side, uh, on the grass that's near a sidewalk on either side and just sprinkle a little, maybe about this little bit of some of that shredded Swiss cheese. Then walk past the next driveway, maybe put it on the other side. So maybe on the, on the walk, there's four or five little caches of Swiss cheese that are shredded. And then basically we go back to the car, get him out, and then we lead him to those pieces of Swiss, uh, those little uh, areas of Swiss cheese. If he won't eat it, that can be an indication he's overwhelmed. And so uh, then we, that's fine. Uh, that just means that he's probably, uh, the, the block is a little bit much for him. So make sure we're going there at a time of the day where it's nice and calm. There's not a lot of dogs or construction people. The leaf blowers are really traumatic for him. Um, and uh, so lawn maintenance guys, we wanna pick a different block if that's the case. So I'd like the guardians to go there together so he just gets used to walking this new open air environment that has a lot more sniffs. And then we're gonna start putting that Swiss cheese down as I described earlier. And when we get to the point where he's starting to eat that Swiss cheese, that's a good indication he's comfortable. Then I'd like the guardians to maybe switch off. Maybe the female guardians holds the leash for the first part of the walk and the male guardian holds it for the second part of the walk. Eventually we'd like to get to the point where the male guardian is the only one that's holding the leash and then, uh, and that'll take a couple walks to get to that point. And then eventually maybe the male guardian gets out, they all drive there as a family, hey. And, uh, but maybe the female guardian stays in the car and the male guardian gets out and takes him for this walk. So we wanna, again, when it comes to dogs, we wanna go at the dog's pace by going slow and getting him used to going there with both of us together and then both of us together and then we're eating this cheese and then both of us together now, but we're both taking turns holding the leash. And eventually I'm on the same block that I've walked multiple times. I feel confident as Canute. And then the female guardian stays in the car and the male guardian takes him for a walk around the block. Maybe, you know, again, five, 10, 15 minute walk. So then he can start doing this on maybe on the regular. Um, he really enjoyed the walks. It seemed to have a profound impact on him and, and my relationship with him. And I think the same thing. Now the guardians here are very good about not pulling him and yanking him around. 
Um, and if he doesn't want to walk him the whole walk, same thing. Pick him up, walk to the end of the block, put, put him down and walk back towards your car. But I'm guessing he probably will be more comfortable doing that if he's with his primary guardian, the female. Um, so th that's a nice little thing that we can do to help him feel a little bit more relaxed around uh, the male guardian who he sometimes is uncomfortable with. Um, I also would recommend feeding him out of getting a snuffle mat and get the snuffle mat with, with uh, narrow, it almost looks like shad carpet. Don't get one with really fat flaps. Um, and the idea is I like to get the ones with a round, uh, with a uh, kind of a Runda, R-U-N-D-A is the one that I usually prefer to get on Amazon. They have a smaller one that's circular. And I flip it over so all the tassels and are hanging upside down and going like that. Then I gently put it back up and I take the food and I waterfall it so it kind of falls in between the cracks here. Now a little Canute has to use his nose to find it. He's working for his food. This is a nice way to boost his confidence because he's earning his food. It also distracts him a little bit. I'd also like the Guardians to get an Omega Paw Tricky Treat Ball. Uh, probably a medium for him. You could probably get a large too. Um, and pr putting his kibble in there and letting him feed, uh, eat some of his meals out of this. Now, the first couple times, you're going to have to roll it for him a couple times. You roll it just right, a couple pieces of kibble come out. When he licks it up, say yes. Roll it a little bit more. And after a while, he'll get good and he'll kind of nudge this thing around. Now he's working for his food, and that's kind of like hunting. And so it's another great way for him to build some confidence learning and uh, doing something that drains a little bit of energy without having the stimulus of all the neighborhood. And uh, even though this is a quiet neighborhood, being outside is a little overwhelming for him, uh, especially in an urban environment. Um, okay, we also went over uh, marker words. I, uh, if I don't have it above, I went through a mar marker loading exercise. The guardian should have this done the next day or two. So you just walk around the house, say yes, give him a treat. Walk in the next room, yes, give him a treat. Now he does not have to do anything. You say yes and put the treat in his mouth within two seconds. The marker word, let me give you the definition. A marker word or marker is the indicator that lets the dog know it did the thing that you want. The marker should come the instant the dog does the thing that you want, unless the thing you want has duration such as potty. So for example, if I wanted him to sit, I would take a treat, lure him up, and when his, when his butt hits the ground, I would say yes and pop that treat in his mouth. So I'm not saying yet sit, because he didn't know what sit means yet. I'm just luring him. And eventually when it gets to the point where I can lure him very easily, I'm saying yes, the instant his butt hits the ground, that lets him know that's what I wanted. And after a while, then I can lure him easily, then I might lure him once, yes, twice, yes, three times, yes, then I might say sit, then lure, then say yes, and then release the treat. The cue should come before the action. You should only say the cue once, and you shouldn't say any other words, uh, or you shouldn't say it after, the more you say it, the less you mean it. If you say it and the dog doesn't do it, that means you should just go back to luring the dog, holding the treat. Remember to keep that treat within an inch of his nose, lure it up until his butt hits around, say yes, and pop the treat in his mouth. When we say our marker word, that comes the instant the dog does the thing that we want. So our timing should be perfect on the time, or within two seconds afterwards, but really the time that the dog does it is really what we want to do. So after we can lure the dog easily, yeah, you've got to stay with me on the shot. I know this, I'm, a, I'm going to force you a little bit because I don't want you to, I don't know if you're allowed to run around the house without your guardian here. So we'll just kind of hang out and I'll pet you on your, on your chest. Slow circles on the chest can be calming and relaxing for dogs. So the marker word uh, comes the instant the dog does the thing that you want, unless the thing you want has duration. In that case, then the marker word comes at the conclusion, like when the dog finishes going potty. And it's always followed by a treat or a pet. Um, there we go. He, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to force him to be on my lap. That's called flooding. But I'm not sure if he's allowed to be uh, running around the house free. So uh, until his guardian comes back, you got to stay here. And I'm going to give you some nice gentle pets. Um, all right, so that marker word, you need to load that word. Walk around the house, say yes, give him a treat. Yes, give him a treat. Do it in all the different rooms of your house. Yes, and at this point, all we're doing is creating an association, a classical conditional response. So yes, and put the treat in his mouth. After a while, you should say yes, and you see him looking up at you and pretty happy. I usually recommend loading the, each one of them about six times. So six times, grab 20 treats, walk around your house, say yes, put the treat in his mouth. Walk a couple steps, yes, put the treat in his mouth. Keep on doing that uh, about six times and then do the same thing with a clicker, but for the clicker, don't hold it next to his ears. Hold like at your back or behind you in your pocket. Click and click quickly, don't click slowly. Click and then give him a treat. Do the same thing about six times. So each guardian does each one of those three times and after that, you're probably done loading it. Then we can start using that as a training tool. So every time his butt hits the ground, we say yes or we click and we give him a pet or a treat every time he comes to us. Yes or click and pet or a treat. Laying down, drinking water, picking up an object, going into the kennel, whatever it is. So yes is your way of saying thank you for doing that particular action. And it's always followed with a treat or a pet. Now remember, the marker word comes the instant the dog does it or within minimum, maximum of two seconds afterwards. 
But after you say your marker word, you want to give your dog a treat within two seconds of saying it. So these things need to come, these things need to come pretty quickly together. Um, okay, we also went over uh, hand targeting. Now, he had some difficulty with hand targeting. Hand targeting is we want a chopping motion here. He touches his nose to my hand. I would say yes and put the treat on my hand. If I don't have that linked above, let me know and I can link that in there. But that's a nice way to gauge consent. That's something else we went over. We went over how to read dog body language and consent. Um, if you watch, when I reach the him over his head, see how his ears are flipping back? And he's kind of shivering a little bit. He's saying, no, I don't like that. Cutoff signals for dogs include the ears going back, licking the lips, turning away, lowering the head, trying to get away, refusing to come to you, uh, baring the teeth, um, growling, pretty obvious cutoff signal. Um, they can also freeze. Don't misinterpret a freeze as the dog saying you have my consent. It's frozen in, in fear. So just because we can do things doesn't mean we should. Um, another one would be rolling over, choking the belly, that's being submissive. So um, if you see your dog, if you're trying to interact with the dog and he offers any of those things, stop what you're doing and then evaluate. Am I, my, are my body mechanics being incorrect? For dogs, front facing is confrontational. If you don't know a dog, direct eye contact is a challenge. So if I wanna meet him, when I came in through this door, what I did is I turned sideways, I knelt down right here, so I was facing this way, but he was over there, and I held a treat out to my side, he didn't come, so I threw a couple treats towards him. So that body mechanic sideways is, is much more approachable for dogs. Front facing is confrontational, reaching over the head can be dominating. So I usually say petting the dog under the chin, on the chest or the two shoulders, he seems to really like it on his chest, and if you pet in slow circles, on the chest with your fingertip, that can be nice and calming and relaxing. I can't see what his eyes look like here, but if you see his eyes going to kind of a squinty uh, mode, that's that sleepy eye, and that's an indication he feels good and relaxed. His ears look nice. Um, if the guardian, the male guardian, sees him going from an open mouth to a closed mouth, getting still and stiff with big, unblinking eyes, that's a really big warning that I feel uncomfortable. Kind of like this, I'm like, that's a big warning. You see that, you wanna stop interacting with the dog, back away, turn sideways, or find a way to make it easier. Maybe approach with a treat. And remember, if, if approaching and reaching all the way to him gets him a dip, uh, too much for him, there, he gave me a little consent. He leaned in for that. Then reach just halfway, pull your arm back, then give him a treat. Reach three quarters of the way, pull your arm back, give him a treat. If it, reach 90%, reach, pull back, give him a treat. Eventually touch, then give him a treat. So we're going at the dog's pace. Now, one thing I'd like the male guardian to do, and he, I showed him he was doing it sitting in this chair, is I like to go like this. Now, I don't know if he'll do it for me because he really wants his mom, but if, if you go like this and the dog comes over and you start petting the dog, after about 20 or 30 seconds, move your hand over here and do it. We want him to lean in. When he leans in, he's saying, you have my consent. And we want to listen for his signs of consent and stop when he gives us his cutoff signals. And if we learn to do those two things, he's gonna feel a lot more relaxed in this home. He's still in a kind of state of shock. He's only been here a week. It takes dogs usually about three months before they fully settle in. And so he's doing much better and he did much better in the session. The guardians were kind of amazed that I can get him to sit on my lap. Obviously I do this for a living. I should be able to do that. Some dogs I have that are too fearful. I can't do that with, there's nothing wrong with that. We have to go at our dog's pace. Now we also went over Cookie in the Corner, which is the introduction of scent games. I will have that linked above as well, but I like to practice that. I toss one, then I toss two, and I work up to tossing five or six treats. Then, uh, and I'm saying, find it, then I'm tossing. And you're marking each time the dog licks it up, and then when they get done, you say, come, hold on another treat, he comes to you, and you mark for that. So we're incorporating a little bit of a recall exercise as well. Eventually what you do is you put the treats down in the area you've been throwing them when the dog's away, and then you point and say, find it. Then he goes and starts stiffing and using his nose to find them. This is a great way for you to introduce the concept of scent games. So find it means use your nose to find things. So when we're on the walk and there's that shredded Swiss cheese, say find it and point at the shredded Swiss cheese. He knows what that means. And when he finds it, say yes. Yes means you did what I wanted. So there's a whole bunch of scent games. This is just the introductory, it's called Cookie in the Corner. This is an introduction to scent games. I'd like you to Google scent games. Now there'll be a lot of websites that'll offer scent work training courses and all that. Just find two or three exercises that you can do for free. A lot of times we use catnip or uh, like uh, lavender oil and a cotton ball or something like that, but there's a whole bunch of ones. You could get like three solo cups, tape a, a, a cotton ball inside one of them with lavender oil on it, put it on the ground and, and do the three card Monty sort of the shell game sort of thing moving around. The dog nudges the, the bowl, uh, the cup that has it. Uh, you pull it over, say yes, and they get a treat for that. They nudge the other one, there's no treat. So after a while, the dog starts using its nose. Yes, oh, that's a good sign that you're nice and relaxed. Um, and so uh, 
what we want to do is find two or three set games they can play in the house. Hide and seek, find things. There's a whole bunch of them. Find some free ones. And these are great ways for him to build some self-esteem, some confidence, and get some exercise in the house without going out in that world that might be overly scary for him. Yes. Oh, such a big yawn you got there. Um, all right. Um, let me see. What else do we go over? Um, oh, then we went over a, a counter conditioning desensitization exercise, and that's a video above. So I kind of, it's very short, which is unusual for me, uh, but uh, watch that video and apply that same technique. Now, see how his mouth is open here? Now, this could be a sign of stress, uh, but his eyes are kind of softer and blinking. His ears are up. So I'm thinking he's just kind of content. And most of the times dogs are going to have an open mouth, but if he's in panting, that can be a sign of stress as well. So for the counter conditioning desensitization exercise, I also did it with, with, with a leaf blower. So we had some uh, gentlemen that were outside that were doing some lawn maintenance. Leaf blowers are hard for a lot of dogs. So I took my phone out there and I recorded the audio of turning the leaf blower on and off. Now when you're doing the counter conditioning desensitization, you need to introduce the stimulus. In this case, the stimulus is the sound of the, uh, the leaf blower. You need to do it at a low enough level of intensity where the dog does not get startled or spooked. They can move their ears and be aware of it. We want them to be aware of it, but not to be startled. And so we played it and went, vroom, and then we gave him a treat. Vroom, gave him a treat. And then eventually we start raising the volume. Or we can have the vroom. Yeah, I know that I did a lot. So right there, if you got that, that means I'm getting close to my breaking point. So we don't want to get reach the breaking point at all. We want to go nice and at his pace. The idea is we go so slow and progressively that the loud sound gets gradually louder and longer and eventually it gets to the point where like when the guys with the leaf blower come, they can go and blow for a minute and then afterwards he expects to get a treat because we can desensitize him from it so it's not scary any longer and we counter conditioned. We created a positive association at the end of it. And so now that leaf blower, every time it comes instead of being something he barks at and protests at, that he doesn't actually have a problem with. And that's the power of positive dog training is we're helping the dog get over these things through a positive way instead of suppressing or punishing. We're helping the dog learn that that thing is a good positive thing and so they don't mind it the rest of their life. Now, because he was under socialized, it's gonna take longer for his guardians to get him custom uh, to things. And it's important to recognize when he protests or freaks out, he's not doing it to say, I'm being a jerk. He's saying, I'm freaking out, man. This is way too much for me. So we need to go at his pace. Now that we know how to read his body language, if you start seeing those ears get pinned back, he stiffens up, his mouth goes from open to a close, his eyes are big and unblinking, um, he's licking his lips a lot. Okay, this is open too much for him. How can I make this easier? Make it a little bit easier, help him practice, and use a lot of little treats. Um, let me see. Uh, we also went over the celebrate game and, uh, and what I call the manners game. So celebrate is if the dog does something that we want that we did not ask for, we say our marker word. Go ahead. Come on in. And uh, then we pet or we give a treat. Now for celebrating, I usually do it with just a, a pet instead of a treat. So if he sits down, yes, and pet him on his chest. He comes to me, yes, and pet him on his chest. We're not asking him to do any of these things, but now he's saying that these are things that my guardians really like me doing, so I'm gonna sit more often. I'm gonna lay down more often. I'm gonna to come to them more often because good things happen when I do. Now, the opposite end of that, the flip side of that coin, is what I call the manners game. So frequently, he likes to jump up and kind of put his paws up on his guardian. I know you don't like that, sorry, buddy. Um, as a way of saying, I want your attention. And that's what he's saying, give me your attention. And is it wrong to pet a dog? No. But anything your dog is doing before you pet them is what you're specifically rewarding. So your paw barks at you, nudges at you, paws at you, and you pet it, you're saying pawing at me, barking at me, nudging me is the best way to ask for attention. So what I do is the, I use the concept of a do-over. So if, if uh, Canute comes up and jumps up on my shin, he won't, he's saying, hey David, I want some of your attention. I'm gonna say, Canute, sit. If Canute sits, I'm gonna say yes, pet him under his chin, and pet him as much or as little as I want. And if he doesn't sit, I just go back to what I was doing. He doesn't get the attention. There's no punishment. There's no correction. He just doesn't get what we want. So I like the guardians to say celebrate to each other. If they see that Canute walks up and he does something near the, their partner and their partner doesn't see it, they say celebrate. They say yes and pet him on his chest. And then if, uh, if, they, if I walk in the room and see that he is jumping up, you want to get down? I'll let you down. Um, and if they say uh, he's jumping up on someone and they're reaching to, and they're petting him, the partner, they might say to me manners. I would say, oh, Canute, sit. He sits. Then I would pet, say, yes, pet him under his chin and help him understand that pawing at the guest is not a good way to get attention, but sitting sure is. Because every time you sit, people give you attention. Now, he doesn't know uh, 
He doesn't know a lot of gar uh, a lot of cues, and I'm going to call his guardian out on video because she did something that's very common. She asked him to sit, and he didn't sit, so she pushed his butt down. So that's force, and that's going to make him less likely to want to do that. So in that case, we just pulled you pull out one of those treats. I use the Tricky Trainers Chicken Soft and Chewy Chicken Liver. You can get them on Amazon or Chewy, um, and lure him up. And as soon as the butt hits red, say yes and release the treat. And what I'd like the guardians to do each one of them three times a day: grab the clicker or the marker or the uh, usual mark word and about twelve treats. Just walk around the house for one minute and lure him into a sit. And when he sits, click or say yes, give him a treat, take a couple steps away, do the same thing. Remember, dogs don't generalize, so we want to do it a lot of places. And after a while, when it gets easy, you say sit, lure him, click, or you say yes and give him the treat. And after a while, you walk around and just say sit, sits down, yes, treat, sit, yes, down, treat. So now he's walking around the house, he's practicing listening to us. He's being rewarded for listening to us. He's feeling good about himself because he's learning a new skill himself. And he's being redirected. So there's multiple things. And it only takes you a minute. So I'd like each one of the guardians to commit to doing that twice a day. So if you're on sit, twice a day, we're just going to say sit. We're going to walk around. We're going to upstairs, downstairs, uh, the basement, out on the deck. Deck's going to be a little bit harder. Don't do that on the deck if there's things that are going on. But eventually you work up to the point where I can go sit. Even when people are walking by, there's dogs barking. And then eventually do the same thing for laying down. And if you have problems teaching him how to lay down, celebrate every time he lays down. Say yes, and, and you can scratch him on his shoulders then. Um, and let me know, I have a video I can go over with sit, lay down, uh, sit up, and stand. Um, but the idea is I'd like you once a week to pick, okay, we're going to find one new cue. Sit, lay down, come, uh, go to your dog bed, whatever it is, hand targeting. And we're going to practice that. Each one of us practices it one minute at a time, twice a day. So all in, you're less than five minutes a day of practice, but if you do that every day consistently for a week, you're gonna be amazed at how much better he does the action, how easy the action gets for him to do, and also this, the auxiliary benefit of this, he starts feeling good about himself. Boy, I'm really good at sitting, and I'm gonna do it. I'm really good at sitting, and I get rewarded and recognized for it, so I'm gonna do it more often. Eventually, he might become one of those dogs, walks up to guests and sits down and says, you better be petting me because I'm sitting down. That's what I do to ask. Now, um, I'd like you guys to watch this video. Keep on going back and watching this video until when you watch this video, everything in this video, you've got covered. If at that point he's still having some issues and you want to work on it, let us know. We can go over uh, and practice some other stuff. Um, but uh, I, I like everybody to kind of get everything done first with the first session's work before we add in a second one. Now, the video above for counter conditioning, I didn't go over instructions. So I'd like you guys to try to stage that two or three times a day. Find an area where we can sit together on the bench or whatever, and, and you can have him on the lap or whatever, but have about 10 or 12 treats. And at first, the female guardian should say yes and give him the treat. Uh, and again, we're going to practice hugging each other, holding hands, embracing. Seems kind of funny. I always, I, I like when I have these sessions, I'm like, what did you do today? Uh, at work, dear. I talked, I, I had people, directed people to kiss and make out so their dog didn't bark and freak out. Um, so practice this. Everything you have, you want your dog to do, you have to practice. So practice this in different parts of your house. Sit on the steps and do it. Do it upstairs. Do it on sitting on the bed. So he gets used to like every time that they hug or hold hands or embrace or, uh, you know, it's a good thing. It means I'm about to get a treat instead of something I don't want. So I practice that maybe spend about one minute, two minutes max each time you practice that and practice in different parts of your house. Try to set a goal to practice that exercise uh, at least once a day. And practicing more often is helpful as long as it's good, positive practice. Um, but uh, try to practice that so that you can get to the point where you can hold each other's hands and you don't have to worry about a jealous Canute. All right. Uh, well, this is, uh, well, over there is Canute, and this is Canute's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.